everyone, and thanks again, Dr. Deming, for letting me be part of this webinar series. I'm really excited to talk today about a fitness activity called Nordic Walking. We've actually branded it here in Canada and called it Urban Polling. And excited to talk about because I think in the U.S. this is, is quite a new activity, uh, even though we've been doing it for quite a long time here in Canada, and it's, it's very well known in Europe. And just like it's titled, it is a dynamic solution for active living with cancer wellness. So just to give you a bit of a background, uh, as Dr. Deming mentioned, I'm an occupational therapist and gerontologist. Um, I actually discovered Nordic walking or urban polling through my Swedish neighbor. I think we can agree that Swedes represent one of the healthiest cohorts on the planet. And I had never heard of this activity called Nordic walking or really just walking with specialized poles. But there's actually over 300 independent research studies on PubMed on the benefits. And um, I really feel that a lot of those are the key goals that many of you are probably trying to achieve in your rehabilitation or in your wellness. You know, the poles allow people to walk more confidently and get outside, particularly during the last year. They provide, uh, they get four points of contact. So it's great for balance, particularly for people who are, have neuropathies. It helps you to get your strengthening back. You'll see there's a lot of arm swing in the movement. So range of motion, particularly for people with breast cancer. It enhances your mood more so than walking alone. And a couple of a pilot studies showing that it also helps to manage lymphedema. So what we did was I really looked from the perspective of an occupational therapist. How do you design a, a pole and a technique that is for people with conditions um, that affect their endurance and balance? And uh, the activator pole and technique, which I'll show you later on, uh, is actually the focus of 18 independent studies. And it is prescribed here in Canada as best practices for cancer rehabilitation and wellness as well as abroad. And as Dr. Denny mentioned, we've got Trina here who um, is a physical therapist, is the president of the CHP community. And she will be talking later on about exercise. So here's a testimonial of uh, uh, someone with breast cancer talking about using uh, urban polling. I also needed something to strengthen and improve my upper body fitness. Compromised by surgery and radiation, urban polling has given me the opportunity to include my upper body in my workout, forcing me to walk more upright and engaging my back as well as my core muscles, all in a very friendly manner. So that's from Jennifer who had breast cancer. And I just wanted to show you how it is recognized here in Canada. This is uh, Canada's lymphedema magazine called Pathways. And you can see there, they've got a woman, a photo of a woman and the topic is on Nordic walking. So today we're gonna describe to you a little bit more about well, what is pole walking, urban polling, polling, Nordic walking, there's lots of terms for it a quick research review. I'm gonna show you a different technique that we developed if you are, uh, if, you're, if you're really concerned about your balance or just your walking ability versus it uh, as just as a fitness activity. And then I, as I mentioned, I'm gonna hand it over to Trina. She's gonna talk about exercises and Mary's gonna give her perspective on some local urban polling groups in Iowa. Uh, and of course, Mary is the director with above and beyond cancer. So let's just go back to the basics. You know, what is it? It's basically your upper body doing a technique that is somewhat similar to cross country skiing. Um, that's why there are so many uh, research studies showing the benefits because cross country skiing provides one of the highest cardiovascular workouts of any activity that we can do. And your lower body is simply walking so like this couple that you see here, they're just walking with specialized walking poles. That's picture just down the street from me here in North Vancouver. And so it's a really neat activity because it combines aerobic strength training 
um, and balance all together. So let's just take a video of what it looks like in action. that's a very short glimpse into how the activity can be a lot of fun. You can really see how those ladies are really just booting it along. You can get some really nice speed with this fitness activity. And let's just look at some of the uh, a testimonial. Uh, Trina thought that um, even though this lady um, is talking from the perspective of having hip pain that this would still be relevant to a lot of you out there and she's talking from the perspective of using the polling to improve her speed just like you saw in the video balance and confident confidence and she mentions that she got a hip replacement and she was walking with a cane um, she noticed that her walking pattern she says gait or walking pattern was really ungainly and she was trying to build up speed and then finally, someone suggested that she try Nordic walking. She said it made a huge difference. Uh, her walking was balanced between both hips. I was able to progress and increase my speed. It also made her feel more confident when she's on a trail. And uh, she's got, because she's got the pole on each side for balance. So she feels it really gave her self-confidence in that regard. And it also helped her to become more active. She walked three times a week. She was able to participate in a 10K half marathon events and the workout with the poles that become addictive. So that's actually not uncommon from what we hear from a lot of people. Uh, again, just uh, providing them with a tool so that they do feel more confident. They can just get back outside, do the walking. And one thing I'll just notice that um, Leanne has mentioned, and that is, is that it is used and prescribed here in Canada as an effective alternative to canes. And if you talk to your physical therapist, it can also be a way to reduce or delay the use of walkers. So let's just go back and look at some of those benefits. When you're walking, and I think walking is a fantastic activity, but you're primarily just using your lower extremity muscles. Whereas when you use poles, you now are doing an activity that engages 75 to 90 percent of your muscles. So it really just turns your activity into a full body workout that also, as, as you saw earlier, reduces that impact. So it's low impact as well off your hips and knees. Uh, it's a great alternative for weight management. The perceived exertion is about the same as just brisk walking. You know, for a lot of you out there that don't want to jog or, or run, um, that, it, that that's just not enjoyable, or you're not able to do that anymore. Um, here's an activity that brings it up from walking into brisk walking. And as a result, you can um, burn at least 20% more calories. Some subjects were as high as 46 in this study. And then let's talk about just pole walking in specifically in terms of those living with cancer, supporting it as a safe and effective exercise. So as you know, lots of times the breast cancer, it affects your endurance, muscular endurance, range of motion of the shoulder joint. Hopefully you saw in that video that there's just a tremendous amount of arm movement and arm swing. Like if I would just give you an example, if you were just to walk for one mile, you would actually move the shoulder joint 900 times. So, you know, just a simple, easy way and effect for you to effectively really get the range of motion uh, for the shoulder joint um, through just walking alone. And then here's another study that was done by Fisher 2015, shows that, you know, using uh, Nordic walking improved people's well-being, uh, 
uh, in terms of significant improvements in vitality and their ability to do daily activities. You can use the poles inside your home as well if you've got balance issues. Uh, and then I had mentioned earlier that there are a couple studies that have shown to that, um, these are pilot studies, but showing some uh, good results in terms of significant reduction in total arm volume for lymphedema. And finally, just here's a study just on walking alone, not pole walking, but, but indicating that um, they have identified an association between slow walking pace and an increased risk of death amongst cancer survivors. So it suggests widespread efforts should target walking during cancer survivorship for improved survival benefits. And I think we just saw earlier how much when you do that activity, how much the potential is for improving your overall walking speed. But I'd like to talk to you that, uh, so that what I showed you previously was the fitness activity, lots of research behind it. But we also did came up with a modified technique. And this is really for people who are just wanting to be able to walk further, you know, that, you know, whether through chemotherapy or post-surgery, um, that their just walking ability has really been affected uh, in terms of overall endurance, or perhaps they have a neuropathy and that's affected their balance. And so we've come up with a different design. Um, the activator pole itself has a different design too. So it goes in conjunction with this technique. And basically, I think you saw earlier, the ladies were really um, booting it along with their arms straight, the pole was diagonal. But if you're wanting to use it for balance and just being able to walk, whether that's inside your home or outside around your neighborhood, the suggestion in this technique is keep your pole now on a vertical. Because there's two research studies that show that when your pole is vertical, that allows you to do more balance and offloading. And your elbow should now be at a 90 degree angle. So just a couple quick tips on how you can change your technique when balance is your primary concern. And I'm just finally, I'm just gonna finish off with a couple more testimonials. This is Kathy Kramer. She actually is a very well-known blogger for arthritis. And she talks about just how the polls helped her to keep active, get outside, two things she loves doing regularly. And she said that um, the polls gave her the motivation for that a lot, they get you out walking further, faster, more frequently. They did pick pressure off her hips and knees and she walks so fast. I've used them for daily walks, but also she used it to be able to travel and uh, did a recent trip to Colorado. So that's another common thing that we hear is that people just want to be able to travel again, but just need that extra confidence to be able to get out there and be able to do that. And then here's finally one here from Rick Phillips. And again, he talks about them probably more from the perspective of the activator technique, just giving him more balance. But you can see he's walking with those elbows at a nine degree poles are straight. Um, and he's able to use them with his wife. So a lot of people said, you know, getting out there again with family and friends is um, so important. And he felt that his body, uh, he could feel his body swaying side to side. And um, again, weight bearing, and he felt like he wasn't going to stumble as much. They were a big win for me. Okay, so now I'm going to pass it over to Trina. And... Um, She's going to talk to you, start off talking with exercising with poles. Thank you, Mandy, for all that great information on pole walking, especially as it relates to general health and fitness and then specific to our cancer survivors. Um, and now what I want to do is just complement your pole walking with a few exercises that you can do with poles. Um, this first one that we'll get started here is a dynamic warm-up routine that you can do just before you go on your walk. Um, the key to a, a good warm up is that it stimulates our nervous system, gets our heart rate up and our blood flowing through our muscles and maybe even sweat a little bit. Um, so this will help decrease your chances of injury, but really it'll help you get the most out of your walk. So with dynamic warm ups or stretches, you don't really hold them for any length of time. You just kind of go through the motion. 
I like to start from kind of the uh, upper extremities and work my way down to lower extremities. So here are some examples of that. And just kind of going through kind of the motion, trying to get really good stretching and movement. I'm going to do both sides. And you can really add more reps to these. Um, and certainly there are a lot more dynamic activities that you can add. But this is really a good, um, again, warm up before you go for a walk. And it should last about five to eight minutes. So we got our upper extremity. Now we're working our trunk. And then we're going to head towards our lower hips, our hips, pelvis area. I'm showing it just a little bit to the side so you can kind of get the technique a little bit. I think I tried uh, one of the times I worked with your group, your walking group. We did a dynamic uh, warm up and I think they really enjoyed it. So hopefully, hopefully maybe more people can do uh, are able to do some of these exercises with their poles. The nice thing again too with these poles, like if you see the lunges, sometimes that's very difficult for people to do, but the but the poles give you some more leverage or allows you to support yourself a little bit better, give you balance. So sometimes we can do exercises with poles that you couldn't do necessarily um, without them. We're almost done, but we're really getting you know, our, our hips, our quads, now our hamstring stretch. Again, you could do more reps. I think I'm only doing about two reps on each side. And showing you from the side so you get a little bit of a better picture here. Almost done. And this will see better from the side, but this is a quick calf stretch. And then finally, our last one, just going up and down on our toes. So you can see that didn't take too long at all. It gets your whole body. Um, again, you can add more reps and make it a little bit longer, but the warm up shouldn't be more than five to eight minutes, but you'll get your heart rate up. And then again, you'll have the best experience with your walk when you go through a little bit of a warm up. So now I'm gonna to move to, um, and if you wanna change the slide to the pictures, thank you so much, Andy. Um, so here are just a few range of motion stretches that can be assisted with your poles to achieve a more effective stretch. So um, you'll see, you know, sometimes our poles act to help support, uh, support us better and, and, and keep our balance. But then here, um, it really does help us improve or assist our stretching. So these are considered um, static stretches. So unlike your dynamic stretches, you're gonna hold these for about 20 to 30 seconds. And for all of our stretches, we never want to create pain. We only want to go to where we feel a nice, gentle stretch, maybe a little bit more, but never pain. Okay, so you're doing the shoulders here. I picked those for, um, you know, a lot of times with our uh, breast cancer survivors, um, our shoulders get um, stiff, uh, you know, from our treatment. Um, so these are some really good stretches for you. Okay, next slide. And then you can also use your poles again, like I said, to support yourself where you can get into, um, you know, positions that you may not have been able to um, without the poles, so you can get even more effective uh, or have your stretches be even more effective. So one is the hamstring stretch, kind of leaning back, um, keeping your legs straight, pull your toe up. And then the other one is kind of an adductor stretch. But again, I'm using my poles in both of these situations to really help me get into a little bit more of a, an effective stretch, okay? All right, and then finally, uh, here are just a few stat, uh, kind of balance exercises, sorry. Um, are you guys able to see that? Okay, if I'm not seeing that anymore, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, these are just balance uh, exercises. They're nice because they're um, progressive. So you can see that they're going from more of a beginner type of uh, balance exercise to a more progressive um, exercise with the bow suit. Okay, great. Yep, pop, on, pop back on, I got it. <laughs> Okay, 
And then uh, for those of you maybe that would like to um, have a little more guidance and support while you're starting um, your walking routine. Um, this also, by the way, complements groups like Mary has put together um, around the Des Moines area walking groups. Uh, this program would support that because it really helps you work on your own time to improve your stamina and your endurance. And then potentially you can do even more when you, when you join the, the larger group walks. But this is uh, called the Walk With Ease program. It's a national evidence-based program with proven outcomes such as increasing strength, balance again, and walking pace. Um, but it really is just a, a, a way for those that maybe want a little more guidance and support while they're starting their exercise or their walking regimen. Okay. And then finally, uh, just a little bit of information about some of the things that we're doing in Iowa. Um, you know, I, again, we'll probably get into it with our conversation with Dr. Deming, but um, I, as a physical therapist, um, I'm really, I support the urban polling. I support, I support pole walking for many different reasons. And I just feel like it's important to get as many people more, more aware of poles, pole walking. And so we're working with community partners kind of all around the state to create pole checkout programs uh, where people, if they just want to try them, they don't, they're just not sure about them yet, they can go to, for example, we're working with the Clive Parks and Recreation. They can go to the Parks and Rec. Um, check them out, no cost, try them on the tra trails, and then bring them back. Um, and then, of course, it, for those that maybe can't afford poles, um, we're trying to make them as more accessible as possible. Um, and then supporting, you know, there's, there's Des Moines Senior Housing that we're starting to work with to try to get a poll checkout program, maybe libraries, fitness centers, and then, of course, working with groups like Above and Beyond Cancer, and it's been great to work with Mary, um, getting more uh, pole walking in the hands of our cancer survivors. Okay. And I think that's it for, I think, our little introduction, at least, to pole walking. But um, Mary, I, do you want to go ahead next and, and talk a little bit about what you've been up to, maybe? Yeah, thanks, Trina. Um, I want to thank you and Mandy for everything you've done with urban pole walking. Um, it's really probably one of our fastest growing programs here with Above and Beyond Cancer. And uh, we want to thank you for uh, presenting this amazing exercise. Above and Beyond Cancer um, started a pilot group uh, this last winter and where we collected evidence-based data. Um, we gave a group of cancer survivors an exercise prescription to use urban poles for at least 120 minutes a week and encouraged, gave them a set of stretches to incorporate. And uh, our post assessments came back amazing. Within that group that post assessed, 100% of them showed um, a reduction in resting heart rate, 100% improved on the 30 second squat test and the two minute step test, which uh, we can relate to increase in strength and endurance. 100% also showed improvement in their balance. And then 85% of that cohort experienced either uh, changes in weight um, by losing inches or weight on the scale. Um, so we're now, um, as I said, it's one of our fastest growing program. We now have currently about 30 people um, who are participating now in this second round of evidence-based programming. And the feedback that we're getting is just phenomenal. Last week, I asked our group um, what they were liking about the pole walking program up to this point, and we were about halfway through or six weeks into it. There were two women who um, explained that they had chronic back pain or ongoing back pain for many years, and with after six weeks of urban polling, their back pain had eased at one set it had completely absolved or excuse me disappeared, and the other said it was now very minor that they they barely noticed it and it was no longer affecting their quality of, of living. Um, there were uh, many people who comment that their changes in their posture, that they notice that not only with their pole walking, but now it's carrying over when they're no longer or when they're not, when they're walking without poles or living without poles. Um, many have noticed their changes in their core strength, feeling it, feeling it and also noticing that their core strength is changing as well. Um, so our anecdotal um, reports have just been amazing. So we're continually 
wanting to um, increase our programming. So now we're working with more locations here in Des Moines. Um, of course, Dr. Deming has been a huge support of our urban pole walking program. We're starting to see more medical um, doctors who are referring their patients to urban polling. Dr. Susan Beck is another big proponent here locally and herself actively participates in pole walking. Um, I know that there is originally was um, research related to breast cancer survivorship. So we have a variety of cancer survivors who participate. We do have a majority who are breast cancer survivors. And one particular or couple have noticed how that has helped with their neuropathy and one that they've noticed a decrease in swelling in their hands or no swelling in their hands um, after walking with urban polling compared to uh, walking without the poles. So I feel really excited about what we've learned so far. It's really matching up to the existing research that has been done with urban pole walking with populations and oncology populations. So again, we're so thankful um, for Trina and Mandy introducing this exercise to us. We're excited about continuing to grow this programming. So if anyone is interested, it's, it's um, you know, get a hold of Above and Beyond Cancer, email me, call me. Um, and this is a program that's open to our community. So we are working with um, anyone who is interested, caregivers as well, anyone who is looking to improve their overall health and well-being, and um, including cancer survivors. Great. Thank you, Mandy and Trina and Mary. Um, uh, and as you uh, pointed out, although there's been some specific trials uh, for cancer, pole walking is of benefit to anyone, no matter what type of cancer they've had. Um, the other benefit that um, you sort of touched on, but I think is really um, fundamentally part of this, is being outdoors and being in nature. So the idea that you are doing physical activity that involves the arms and the legs that it is a little bit of resistance, it's aerobic, and you're doing it all in nature and just the health benefits of being in nature. So it's uh, sort of a trifecta of, um, of benefit that it provides. Well, probably more than trifecta, you, you throw in fellowship. I mean, the benefit of uh, being together with other people. A lot of the activities that we do around Above and Beyond Cancer um, really work like a support group. They're not sort of your fundamental um, old fashioned support group where everyone sits in a circle and talks about their problems. It's how do you get fellowship um, and feel this passionate support from others. And that happens also in a group activity. So let me ask a few questions. And Mary, let's, um, and you might have touched on this, but I think that we actually had a, a grant from the AARP or a gift from AARP that, that uh, allowed us to acquire some of our polls to get started. Is that, is that correct? And maybe uh, Trina talked about community resources and community collaborations. Uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the history of how Above and Beyond Cancer created pole walking as part of its programming. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Most definitely our, um, our partnership with Trina and Community Health, um, CHP Community, and um, introducing us to this exercise and our very um, uh, strong connection that we do have with working with programs with ARP, who did um, gift or grant us some money. We were able to purchase poles. So the important component of this is if someone wants to try polling or be a part of our evidence-based program, we give that participant a set of polls to borrow during the duration of that program. So um, Above and Beyond Cancer is able to strongly support and make sure that finances are not going to be an obstacle for participants. They love it, they see the value in it and choose to invest in their own polls. And that is us, or we as an organization officer still chances may not be able to purchase their own polls that we can with scholarshiping them to do that so they can make. So Mary, 
Um, I think we've got a little bit of a, a faulty connection with you, and we've lost some of that. I don't know if you want to try to reconnect. Maybe I'll pivot over to Trina. And Trina, you talked about, I love the, the community partners, you know, none of us is as good as all of us. And uh, maybe talk a little bit about your experience in developing community partners around uh, pole walking and other programs. Yeah, absolutely. I think it starts with you know, looking at, at the need, um, you know, the different partners that and who they serve. So we've got people from, you know, again, Parks and Rec, we've got Above and Beyond Cancer, we have schools, we have churches, community centers, um, and trying to work with those partners to, um, you know, one, introduce polls um, and the benefits and how they could serve their populations, and then um, working with them to, to find ways of how they can embed that into the programming uh, so I always use the example of Clive Park Direct because that's kind of where we first started. Um, and they, especially during COVID, was trying to find ways to keep people active. Um, and so the polls was really, were really interesting to, uh, for them. We tried um, kind of a, uh, kind of we did some demonstrations um, with the city and with, with the community. Um, there was good, there was a fairly good interest um, in that area. Um, with pole walking, uh, with Clive, as you guys know, the Greenbelt Trail is it goes right through there, and there's a lot of great walking trails. And we had done a study as well with um, we did surveys at different events that were being held in Clive, and and you know what what activities are you most interested in? Walking is always number one. Um, so we knew we wanted to support Clive somehow with walking, um, and then we also wanted to um, you know be as inclusive as possible. And that's what I really love as well with polls is you can be inclusive. Um, you can work with people that have disabilities or have physical limitations um, and really get them more involved um, in some of those things. So the poll walking checkout program is really also to help those that may um, not be able to afford their own polls so that there's no barriers to trying poll walking. Um, and uh, a parks and rec type situation is a great uh, example of where they can provide a service to their community where people could come in and check those poles out, go actually right next door to utilize the trail. Um, so that's just one way that I think we came together with the Clive Parks and Rec. But then um, working with organizations, again, like Above and Beyond Cancer and training leaders in those organizations, how to use the poles, the benefits of them so that they can independently take that on. And, and um, well, with, for example, like Mary, kind of really expand that within their own organizations and, and their membership and be able to serve their, um, you know, the people that they work with the best and how they know, know how to do that. So um, I think partnerships are really, really important to really get uh, these polls in the hands of those who really, really need it. Thank you, Trina. And uh, Mandy, maybe share some of your successes up there in Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver is a beautiful city. Is it Stanley Park? Is that the name of the big? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I loved what you said about, you know, the polls just allow for people to get out. There's so much research showing too that when you exercise outside, you get the additional benefits in terms of mood as well. So, um, you know, not only you're getting more exertion, but the benefit of just being outside. And particularly in the last year, we've seen an unprecedented change in people's awareness um, about this activity uh, during the pandemic with walking being one of the few recommended activities. So we do see it being a really good solution um, for now and moving forward as um, that becomes something that people really value. I just wanna to say too that I um, thank you so much, Mary and, and Trina as well, because this is something new to Iowa. It's new to the United States. You do need the people who are the innovators and um, to be out there willing to try something in their community that they haven't seen before. And so I just wanted to extend um, that thank you back to you guys for taking a chance. And I'm just so thrilled to hear today about the, um, the benefits that you've seen as a result of uh, taking that chance.
Mary, do you, I think we have we, uh, Mary, do you want to go back and try again in terms of? Oh, Hi, Chris. Hey, Hi. We lost Dr. Deming. So I okay. think that's a great idea, Mary, if you want to go okay. back and hit on some of those uh, comments you made before when, when your internet went out. Yeah, and I don't know where when it went out, but I think what I was sharing is that ARP did work with us to help us purchase um, poles and supply poles, and therefore we're able to um, allow anybody who wants to participate in our program a set of poles to borrow while we are going through this 12-week program. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to piggyback what you guys talked about with the benefit of outdoors after our first pilot group, we sent out an anonymous survey um, in addition to the evidence-based data. And 90% of those who participated said that it increased their time outside. And then 70% and believed that it led to making other health goals. So that's the other exciting thing that we, we know about typically when we get into a routine, it can trickle into other positive health decisions. And so um, this little cohort and what we found out that was true as well. Um, and I love that, um, as you said, it's something new to learn, but once you learn it, it does seem rather simple. And, um, you, and we did do it all year round, or we started in February. So we're excited to continue to offer this program all year round with partnership with Mercy One Health and Fitness and some other facilities that have indoor capabilities when we may not be outside, which may sound funny talking to Canadians when everyone's used to doing that. And so for us, it, it's, it's helping Iowans re uh, kind of think about what does it mean to be active outside. And so we did do a lot of pool walking in the months of um, February and March when it was still a little cold. So. Oh, that's great to hear. Uh, you know, just adding on to what you said, I, I think what's neat about the polls is that we get a lot of people, you know, who have been inactive or on the couch. And like you said, it, it just allows a starting point. And I think what's really neat is to hear about people who they get walking and then they start doing a little bit more than it. They're, you know, and then they realize, hey, I could probably go on this trail that I you know, couldn't before because I was a little concerned about the uneven terrain. And then, you know, people start perhaps hiking and, and traveling. So, uh, and then they get family and friends involved. So I, I love the way it kind of snowballs into being just a starting point to get someone out who feel, who previously, like you mentioned, Mary, those ladies with a lot of pain, who probably thought they couldn't just even get, you know, back out walking again. And then it moves them to other things as well. Yeah, I agree. So um, I want to close with um, just reminding people that anybody in the Des Moines Metro Central Iowa area who want to get involved to reach out, contact Above and Beyond Cancer or me and um, anyone, again, this is a community open program and you're welcome to pop in, try a class at any time. Those classes are posted on our website and also on our Facebook page. And we can also um, get together and do a one-on-one -on -one as well. So, um, and as Trina mentioned, they are available to check out, um, or you also can uh, utilize uh, the equipment that Above and Beyond Cancer has as well. So we hope to see more people out and trying this really beneficial and fun outdoor social activity. Great. So I am back connected and uh, thank you so much, Mandy and Trina and Mary. And um, hey, if any of you guys are, are in near the um, uh, Mercy One Health and Fitness Center, we're going to do a spin class in uh, 15 minutes. So come join us and maybe we'll do a little pole walking afterwards. But um, I, you have inspired me. I have not tried it yet, Mary. And I it's, you want you to you know, get me out there. I do a lot of walking and some running, but I haven't actually done it with the polls, but you've inspired me to give it a try. So thank you so much for um, presenting and for what you've done to help uh, expand our knowledge on this. And I'm going to turn it over now to Chris and he's going to send us out. We recorded this and uh, as we do all the cancer education series sessions and they will be uh, they, this will appear on our YouTube channel, uh, the Above and Beyond Cancer YouTube channel. So if you just search uh, on YouTube for Above and Beyond Cancer, you'll see all of our cancer education series. 
and some exercise videos that Mary and some others have done as well. They will also appear on the Mercy One website on the, can on the Cancer Center website and just search for Cancer Education Series and, and all of those recordings will pop up. So Mandy, Trina, Mary, thank you all very much. And we sure appreciate, I think this might be our first international uh, session of the Cancer Education Series. So one of the going on Zoom uh, webinar se segment. So uh, we sure appreciate it. And, and I know the time difference was a little wonky as well. So we sure appreciate both of you uh, joining us and, and Mary, of course, uh, from from uh, right here in Des Moines. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. We'll thanks everybody. so much, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.